Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogboat333, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, the New Order, Last Days of Europe, as the Greater German Reich. Now, in the last video, we, uh... Crap, what did you even do in the last video? Uh, we worked on our American diplomacy, and we more or less normalized trade relationships with them, which is very, very nice. Uh, we haven't quite left the embargo yet, but we're working on it, and so... We're doing that. We're all, we're kind of jumping all over the place. I realize. And we haven't done the Japanese branch of our tree yet, but we're f finishing up. Probably do the the guiding hand and then go for Europe's dreams, and then just kind of prepare to go after the rest of these uh these guys. RG Farben is going to be the biggest pain to dismantle. Because they got a big fucking power base. Oh my god. This is silly. Ooh, the liberals in Canada. I'm sorry. Information's reached Germania from the east, beyond the exclusion line for Reich Coleman's arts. Apparently the ROA an until now collaborator of ours based in the city of Samara has decided that it no longer is in their best interest to be associated with us. Subsequently, they have announced the immediate cessation of any and all relations, interactions, or contact with any of any kind between themselves and the Reich to anyone who will listen. The ROA, formerly under the leadership of Andrei Vlasov, provided itself valuable during Operation Barbarossa and the West Russian War in contact between the Reich and cliques within their military led government and proven unofficial in the years since. Clearly, however, the internal political balance has shifted towards a faction unfriendly to our interests and non-receptive to our support. The announcement, both in general and in terms of response, has been given a low priority by both the Foreign Ministry and the OKW. The situation in Russia me remains mostly unclear, with the nominal political considerations of various territories, including those of the ROA, significantly undermined by administrative overextension, insurgent efforts by escaped loyalists of defeat regimes, and other internal tensions. Militarily, they are expected to pose no threat to the Wehrmacht forces should a limited or escalated conflict begin. In time when the Reich recommences external operations, they will no doubt effortlessly be brought to heel once again. No matter, they will fall in time. So we have liberalism winning in Canada, and for no real reason, because I'm not expecting anything bad to happen when you talk about I'm going to send some troops to that border, and uh, to again, totally for not no real reason, I'm going to be building some forts, I have no idea why you would ac accuse me of expecting something, because why, why would I? Um, Italy just had a major brain fart this whole time, so I'm just going to let them wrap the news around their neck even more. Honestly, I think that's the play. So we have a 99% chance of winning. We're doing all these. So we'll do Ober, uh, Unternehmen Nadelor. Um, it's been confirmed. The black state of Europe has spread its nasty tendrils to the USA. That advertisement agency in Madison Square Park was merely the beginning. Those Burgundian agents seem to have gotten their funding somewhere from within the U.S. financial sector. To prevent them from doing anything further, the R&D will immediately begin a deeper and more thorough investigation. doing more research we will soon just have a hundred percent outright success rate it's gonna be crazy I'm not complaining it's gonna be fun but it's also gonna be crazy anyhow ah we got the guiding hand We will go with Europe's dreams. Vazolverin has a foundation it needs to succeed. Now it is time for Germany to loosen its grip 
and take a step back. If this is truly to be a pan-European project, member states must have the ability to make their own mark on it. Maintaining the, its original purely German nature will harm international relations in the long term, which sits ill with both my conscious and my good sense. Right, this is a German accent. Many of the rights and privileges granted to our junior partners will be relatively insignificant in nature, of course. There are many burdens that come with economic freedoms, and only we are in a position to bear them at this time. It will be difficult for our people, as they prosper, to cede more control to the rest of the own in the future, but I have faith that our institutions will make it happen. Wunderbar. We're no longer getting military or civilian austerity. Remember someone said that it's not a... It's not necessary to keep cutting the uh, budget. But I'm, gonna, I'm still going to do it. Cause why not? Oh, I need to keep closing that. Cause it just won't leave me alone. I already have England in my faction. I don't even know how that happened, but I have them in my faction. You know, we'll let them win one fucking game. What does it matter? We still are fucking winning. They're getting Burgundian culture <sighs> spread all across. It's not. Ooh. For a conspiracy, we'll see what happens there. Alright, okay. Tom. <sighs> Zinc Mafia. Yeah, it stated, turning his head away to blow smoke through a window. Consider the consequences of forcing the, the Zulvan to remain dominant of the rank. If we do that, all they're setting ourselves up for is a future failure of our spear. His words stung uncruelly, and Speer relented on uttering a swear before turning his look to Helmut Schmidt. Und you? Sh uh, Speer asked, voice tightened somewhat. Schmidt nodded politely, then showed a hand towards Erhard. He is right, my viewer. If we decide not to liberalize the Zolvan, then you'd be running the risk of eventually turning the members against us. Just look at Japan and its sphere as an example. The tensions between the members in Japan are palpable. Was Speer really hearing this? Now two of the four members of a gang were nearly co directly coercing him into following through with their demands. In Fidera's voice, protest? Then only the obvious would have followed. Letting the air and the room stay thin for a few seconds more, he finally decided to speak. Ehad, he stated, turning his gaze to the man, let's say we do liberalize the Zovern. In the future, what's to stop them from aiming about detaching themselves from the Reich? To pursue a light at the end of a tunnel? After all, we are so benevolent now, then the implication would be that we cannot continue this benevolence for the future. And this... This would not bode well for the Reich. Earhart's eyes narrowed and his teeth grazed against the skin of his cigar just a bit further. Taking it out of his mouth, he sighed. My fear, you have it backwards. I understand that you hold up a more traditionalist position on this, but it doesn't mean that everyone in that is in jail. The Reich is unreasonable. But for exactly the reason you initially described is why they would not leave us. Shapiro leaned back, his stare softening only slightly. After all, what do they gain out of leaving a mutually beneficial partnership? Pride? Earhart shook his head. They already lost that a while ago. They would only have to gain by staying, and nothing by losing. This... <sighs> would be only happen if you let the reform pass. An air of silence passed between them for many seconds. Both men, in front of the Fuhrer, wondered what he planned on saying. Before he pushed his chair back and stood up, the expression on his face spoke a thousand words. 
Had Hashmit. Yeah, both dismissed. I will be busy. Well, there we go. We got that going. I know someone was asking if I could do a science tree real quick. Let's start going that, down that a little bit. You know, I think I will real, real quick. The new era of Weisenschaft. Sadly, the last decade has seen the Reich fall behind other world powers under all aspects, and technology has been no exception. I'm gonna shoot. Um, my, my haircut guy starts typing me a message. But he didn't send it back to me. Um, and technology has been no exception. If we were to truly bring Germany into a new age, we desperately need to invest on the research and development of cutting-edge innovations. Despite our considerable experience, we'll never be able to reclaim our place at the top if we can't put it to good use. As the fields of engineering and electronics seem to be the new frontier of technological advancement, we shall create a public agency tasked with subsidizing old and new companies. With the know-how needed to produce and develop computers and their programs, the Reich will be at the forefront of innovation once more. So we'll get some sort of bonus. We'll have to wait and see. But it might be neat. Let's go ahead and check how the slave... A white uh, Ruthenia, that slave population is falling. Same in the Rhineland, Middle Germany. Uh, Poland is still kind of suffering along. I don't know what else to do, so I'll just kind of get working on doing this. Just a few middle class investments here and there. Not, not there. Wait. Do more in investments already? Apparently so. Well. What is happening? Is this, this is supposed to be on a one month cooldown, but I don't think there is a cooldown. I, I'm going to stop before I lose more pee pee. And they've side, side with us. The Reichskanz lie was abuzz with activity, even late into the evening, as always. Rebuilding a country from the ground up, literally in this case, was a gargantuan task. The entirety of the Reich's bureaucracy was hard at work to overcome the difficulties. An important meeting was happening in the Fuhrer's personal office as Albert Speer was meeting the Minister for Innovation and Research, and the directors of his surviving structures dedicated to the advancement of science. The Civil War had destroyed most institutions of higher learning, and the few still in the condition of work lacked the funds and personnel. That's good water. As the minister listed all the problems and difficulties of the research sector, the air became heavier and heavier. At one point, the fear interrupted the barrage. <sighs> minister, please stop. Are we truly in such a state? Has the Reich really fallen behind so much? <sighs> please come with me, my Fuhrer. As the two moved to the window, the minister pointed at God's. Do you recognize them? And that was enough to answer. To his con... Consternation, Speer saw that most, if not all, the cars and pet trucks passing were Model 10s. Ten, if not more, years old. Looking with more attention, he also noticed details that he had missed when looking outside the pat in the past weeks. Patchwork re re repar reparations to the roads and sidewalks, electric cables hanging from scrambled together power lines, public phones scattered because the people had no telephone lines inside their homes. Right at this moment, as if to confirm that indeed, the situation was dire. All the lights went out in the office, and the suspended voices from the outside of the door made it clear it was a general blackout. The fear of fumbling around his desk suddenly dejected inside. <sighs> Please resume your report, Minister. Uh, I'm sorry, my fear, but it, it, it's too dark to read. Uh, imagine how having the power go off randomly. It's like they live in California. I, mean, I joke, but I live in fucking California, too, so, you know. That's not nice. Uh, 
Um, let's do an internal investigation. The ideologues have mostly been driven out, but there's still plenty of people in the Nazi, in the Nazi party, bureaucracy, and the Wehrmacht, who have quietly pushed to maintain the status quo. By definition, this includes the continuation of slavery, an unacceptable position for any politically reliable national socialist. As part of the modernization of the Reich, such reactionary elements must be swept out from the halls of governance. Our reforms face a great deal of opposition from those who claim to be on our side already. We don't need these crypto borman rats gnawing at our foundations, too. The R&D and Nazi Party reformers must be merciless in the immediate expulsion of all pro-slavery individuals so that the tendencies of our government may be permanently corrected. And now my haircut guy sent me the message. Okay. Let me check to see how, because I, I don't want a haircut. Seven should work? Okay. Sorry about that, I just... I'm trying to get a... I'm trying to look good. Not not for any ladies, because there are no ladies to fucking see. Any, even if there were. Uh, we, we, yeah, we won. Um, there, there's nothing that's going to happen there, I'll tell you that much. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know. I did get affiliate. Yesterday, last stream, uh, yeah, it was yesterday's stream. We, um, we watched the vice presidential debates, which I did a little video announcing beforehand. Uh, we'll wait until we get some more PP -pee before we move on. Let's do a more, f a moral fail gender armeni. Controversial at the best of times, nobody's like the model, modern fail gender armeni. Military police are an absolutely essential part of any modern army. They maintain control of occupied territories and also ensure that soldiers both follow civilian and military law. Unfortunately, the Here's Watch men have developed a reputation for uh, poor conduct, to put it lightly, often ordered to take no half measures when dealing with unruly civilians, massacred by overstressed or heavily Nazified gendarmes, are all too common in the East. We have to put a stop to atrocities committed by those who claim to uphold the law. The fear of putting an end to the Gestapo, but we need to go that far. Gendarmes who have records of criminality will be prosecuted if possible, while those who are otherwise unfit for service will be given early retirements. And their steed will raise a new, more ethical field in Marshall, one that does its job and does it well without any of the brutality or bloodshed. So we'll get rid of the kill it all rule. Which, you know, that's probably a good idea. But yeah, we watched for debate. Got some, uh... That was kind of fun. Um, no, not it wasn't. Watching it with the chat was fun. The actual debate itself was kind of it's kind of boring, which I'll take over. You know, the first fucking debate we had. It's holy shit. So we got military policing instead. We got a heck of a lot more war support. And that's gonna help us get more command power, I believe. Yeah, so that's actually a pretty good trade-off. Yeah, let's go ahead and do uh, a clean Wehrmacht. Field Marshal von Treskow once said to the men of the OKW, We must take care, my friends, of how our actions will shape our memory. How will history remember us if not even a handful of German soldiers had the courage to cease for criminality? If you don't change our ways, the guilt will not s fall solely on Bormann, Heydrich, Goring, and their comrades, but on you and me, your vibes and mine, your children and mine, the people of Germany and all the generations to come. We must accept our failings. The hero's crimes aren't entirely our fault, but they are all they are our responsibility. Perhaps history will never exonerate us. Perhaps our steam fear will write in the history books and conceal the truth of Germany's fall into darkness. But we can claim one victory. It will forever be a fact that we took a stand against Nazism, began to write the course that our nation was set upon nearly forty years ago. Now we can only pray that our decisions are never forgotten by those who succeed us. We can fucking hope. Ugh. Ah. And good water. Government of National Salvation. Is that Bulgaria? 
Oh no, they want fascists. That's not fun. Oh, I guess what you gotta do. Um. <clears throat> Ooh. The Gundian ties into U.S. financial sector have been successfully researched. It seems that this source of funding was from a sh from shell companies masquerading as civilian businesses. The state of profits is by a large margin. Expected operation to continue for an undefined but lengthy period of time if nothing is to be done. With this data, we can extrapolate that the following facts. Ornstadt Burgundy, Burgundy is making a significant amount of wealth via siphoning money from foreign countries, using their agents to infiltrate with fake identifications and pose as wealthy American businessmen. Expected to happen similarly in countries that have developed civilian industry, Japan, Canada, etc. Advise to research into the black state itself. End of page. So, getting filthy rich, but for whatever for. Boys, I, I think there's only one way to find out, I think. And uh, this is going to be dangerous, but we might have to go into the black state. Oh, I'm sorry, the the, the African-American state. I, I, I need to be politically correct. I'm sorry. Um, I make that same lame joke always. Don't, don't take it seriously. Um, before we keep going, let's keep, um, let's work more on this just to help repatriation efforts speed up more. Largest obstacle we face is this in this noble endeavor is the Reich's medical corporations, Siemens, Reichsfeka, Daimler Benz, and IG Farben. All four make use of mass slave labor to varying degrees, with IG Farben easily being the worst offender. Using a workforce composed solely of slaves means immense profits for those corporations, given their lucrative state and military contracts. Their CEOs enjoy lives of disgusting wealth and luxury, entirely incongruent with National Socialism core principles. While well, the common people starve and slaves are ground to molten in their millions. To tear the Reich free from their grip of the mega corporations, we must be equal parts ruthless and cunning in our dealings with these parasites. Even with their most ardent supporters purged from the Nazi bureaucracy, Nazi party and bureaucracy, they wield considerable net political influence in the Reich to say nothing of their economic clout. We cannot simply crush them, nor can we allow them to any room to wiggle free from our grass. This will be the greatest challenge to our mandate yet. Yet. So, well, we've almost kicked him out of, um, let's see, Norddeutschland. The Rhineland is still progressing kind of slowly. How about Azerbaijan? We are almost, we almost kicked him all out. We almost got all the slaves out of Azerbaijan. Let's do meet for a banquet. Kissinger assures, assures us that he has just the right tact for dealing with pro-slavery interests. Predictably, we will need to make a lot of concessions to keep them in line, but tax breaks and special treatment are a small price to pay for their cooperation. Besides, the Reich is still a dictatorship. Once a fierce position is safe from corporate influence, we can adjust the arrangement as we please. The plan we will be proposed to CEOs and officials from the mega corporations at an upcoming banquet to be held in the fierce official residence. Everyone who is anyone in the corporate world will be intense along with enough prominent spirits to put pressure on the bloodsuckers and drown out any rumblings of discontent. I like it. Let's get some more tank stuff, I guess. I don't know. Not a lot of important stuff to worry about. Um. Did I get an industry boost? I did. Now that is nice. Let's do enhanced industrial administrations. Just research that for a bit. I don't even care at this point. If we won't get to it in a while, just because I have nothing else to really research right now. What, it's 78, I think? Let's go to, let's uh, get to 1970. Meeting for a banquet. So, 
How are you going to sell it to them? Asked Kissinger, leaning back to avoid another face full of smoke. Arrow took a long drag on a cigar before replying, <clears throat> It doesn't need selling. They're going to lose its slaves, and they're going to like it. The deputy Fuhrer looked perturbed. Uh, Ludwig, are you sure that's wise to... It's slavery, Kurt. Gerhard interrupted curtly. Slavery. Never forget that. They're fighting to end one of the most evil institutions in history. The more ground we give, the more we legitimize it. And that's the one thing we must avoid at all costs. They'll expect a dozen concessions for every single man and woman set free. We can't have any of that. If Speer doesn't have the backbone to, to go to their throats, we'll do it ourselves. Kissinger looked equally bemused and weary. I, I can't help but notice you've already turned this into a joint effort on our part, Ludwig. Remember that if one of us goes down, so does the entire cabinet. Erhard stubbed out a cigar in the fancy brass ashtray on his desk and smirked grimly. That's exactly the idea behind this push. Remember, we still have a dictator on our side. Yes, this will kill relations between the state and industrial leaders, but that's what we want. Speer has already made himself quite popular. And if we can make a true abolitionist out of him, the people will never forget it. From that, the downfall of Abs and his clique will be set in stone. It'll just be a matter of time. Freedom will be won at the dining table. Wunderbar. Well then, let's prep for nationalization. If we make a corporation somewhat appeased, we can go ahead with the next step of our abolition program, the nationalization of all privately owned slaves. Henceforth, each and every slave will be the sole property of the right government and shall be utilized and treated as we fear himself directs. This will make... That... That... That this happens to mean far more humane treatment is an important bonus that will integrate us with the slaves themselves, the reformist movement, and the international community. Slaves can now expect generally less demanding work, ordinary hours, and some basic human dignity. Of course, they are still not free, but anything is an improvement from, for them at this point. Perhaps future, future generations will ask, why didn't you free the slaves immediately? And we'll, and we'll think less of us for it. This, however, is a small sacrifice compared to the good that this program will do for the Reich. Fair enough. Can we invest some more money? Another 30 mil? There are no more slaves in Azerbaijan. Let's go, boys. Kick them out. No slaves in Ukraine, either. Oh, okay, so we got that finished up. 80 million? The R&D will undergo its most dangerous mis mission yet. We know for a fact that the Orden State of Burgundy has one of the most, da most dangerous intelligence agencies, if not the most, in the world. But Gellin wishes to prove otherwise. He knows that Himmler expects his agents to cross into the Black State, but Gellin refuses to back down from the challenge. A foothold will be established, and perhaps we can hasten the downfall of this rogue state. Fucking fingers crossed. Reichsvoka, fuck off. Um, abolition would only be the start of addressing the slavery question. Freeing the Untermenschen will ultimately only exchange one problem for another. We'll be rid of, million, of countless millions of slaves, but we will be left with an equal number of homeless, landless, and destitute individuals who cannot be granted citizenship under German law. This is the issue that anti-slavery radicals always fail to answer adequately. The gang before, however, worked with the Fuhrer on this for years and hit upon an ingenious solution. Dubbed the Rucksführungs program, the solution is set up in two stages. The first is the abolition of slavery. This will see all slaves placed under the direct administration of the Reich government and granted special status. They will be confined to special districts and camps, though in far more humane conditions than the old concentration slager. The second stage, which will be far more difficult, is to repatriate every single former slave to the nation of origin. That This is, of course, complicated by the state of post-war Europe. 
All Russians will be shipped out to Muscovian, for example. But the Rooksferings program remains the last best hope for millions of unfortunates. That's yeah, something. Let's see some corporate assets. That's not doing well in the Rhineland, I'm noticing. It's doing really well in Poland, strangely enough. After a great deal of debate, often fueled by alcohol and conducted in a haze of cigar smoke, the fear in his cabinet have finally fi have finalized the solution to the long-standing question of slavery. As anyone knows, the approximately 40 million slaves in Reich cannot simply be granted monumissen en masse and set free. This would result in little more than social and economic chaos across Europe, along with a great deal of bloodshed. The first and most pressing concern is, of course, the nationalization of slavery. As long as slaves remain private property, they remain vulnerable to excessive exploitation and the whims of uncaring industrial corporations. Placing them under the exclusive stewardship of the Reich's government will ensure that they are well protected and give more humane treatment. An important step in rehabilitating our image as a more benevolent empire. The second step is repatriation. The overwhelming majority of slaves are Slavs, predominantly of Polish and Ukrainian origin. Thankfully, we have extensive records of the slave system and can track each and every one of them. Starting shortly after their nas nationalization, these slaves will begin to be organized and sent back to their the countries of origin in a st steady stream. Though so at first, we expect this works furrings program to pick up speed as with freed slaves become more cooperative and that our intentions are true. Will they thank us for this? I don't know. But they better. Or else, well, I don't know what we'll do. Let's just, let's go to House Divided. As expected, Reich Minister Schmidt visited the Lincoln Memorial and has been photographed proudly shaking hands with three reformed aligned liberals of the American political sphere. While his views on the current politics undertaken by the Reich is known to everyone, turning the international stage into a megaphone for his personal ideas will surely have consequences. Still, one can't deny that this has further pleased the government of the United States, as its people now see Germany as a place striving to grant freedom to everyone. However, it remains to see whether such hopes will become reality. Alright, this is, it's uh, coming up on election time for the Yanks. Um, how's Wally doing? Not bad. We'll see if he gets elected. Old Bennett boy. And he's hanging in there. Ooh. Uh-oh. The conference room was thick with cigar smoke. Abs, Von Siemens, Gielenberg, and Flick sat around the great oaken table, idly tapping ash into provided trays and sipping their drink of choice. <sighs> Shapiro's late, drawled Abs, extinguishing the nub of his cigars and producing another from a gold-plated case. Some fear he is, muttered Flick, as he finished his gin and tonic. Can't even keep an appointment, and he thinks he can run the economy however he likes. The room lit up with coarse laughter. <laughs> Makes you long for the days of Hitler. Talk your leg off, but at least you'd get what you'd wanted from him in the end. Do you suppose he is seriously serious about cutting our supply? Asked Gielenberg. Surely he'd just be shooting himself in the foot. How does he expect the wreck to survive without us? It's disgraceful that he even made the suggestion, Absquipped. Disgraceful! Disgraceful that he just piss on National Socialism like that, on everything that made Germany great. I'm sure the people would love to hear all about that, don't you think? The sudden the click of jackboots on Marbled entered earshot, drawn closer by the second. Nobody moved. The double doors swung open as a pair of sharply dressed Wehrmacht guards stepped in, saluted the guests, and stepped aside. Behind him marched the Fuhrer. By his side was Ludwig Erhard, the hated meddler. 
they drew to a halt before the conference table, surveying the room with cold eyes. Nobody rose to salute to greet them. Men who understood each other needed no words. <sighs> Citizens, said Speer, voice clear and with a rehearsed edge to it. Henceforth, by fair directive, all involuntary laborers in the Greater German Reich are nationalized. All individual laborers, organized groups, and privately held camps are to be considered state property. You will not be compensated. That is all. The room was silent for a moment before Abs dropped his cigar and rose to speed. Speer! This is! But he was gone, the guard slamming the doors behind him. One image that will remain with Abs for weeks to come, however, that of Ludwig Erhard, smirking as the destruction of his corporation was assured. Well, this means war. That was base, though. I'm not going to lie. That was pretty good. House divided. Can't stand its own, all that stuff. Let's downsize the uh, Fairmacht a bit more. The bulk of our forces during the Burger Creek were comprised of ad hoc militias. Students, freed slaves, and ordinary citizens did a good deal of the killing and most of the dying. Most of those who survived simply returned to their own old lives, but some found their calling in our service and remained loyal, becoming a sort of informal reserve force. Time to call, sound the call of war once again, Those that those brave souls might heed its call. For our new here, we need strong, experienced men, proven in battle. German spirit shall come to be displayed in bravery and discipline once again, rather than ruthlessness and, insensible, and insensate bloodlust. Well, of course. Schmidt at the Lincoln Memorial. This was perhaps one American landmark Schmidt had seen whose scope even held a candle to the landmarks of Germania. And yet somehow the Lincoln Memorial put the mass of statues and displays of Germany's capital to shame. With the ancient Greek style built building, the huge statue of Abraham Lincoln will, were by no means simple. The mem memorial could hardly be considered elaborate or covered in interesting details to examine. But all of the pieces put together, the dimly lit but noble Lincoln sitting pleasantly in his chair, overlooking the steps leading down towards the reflecting pool and the Washington Monument in the, in the distance. It evoked this feeling inside of Schmidt. It, it was longing. Longing for better days, simpler times, and for leaders with as much honor and integrity as they used to have. No German politician valued liberty, openly, the way Abraham Lincoln did. Why did those in charge today care so damn much about what individuals said or did in the privacy of their own homes, or in the confidence of loved ones and friends? It was both immensely perplexing and infuriating for Schmidt. And then he realized what he longed for the most. A free and just world. Ah, uh, yes. Because it's that simple and easy. <sighs> Thought I admit the world would be pretty boring if there was nothing I could do to make it a better place. Abraham Lincoln did not reply to Schmidt, but surely he would approve. And make it a better place I shall. No more effects from the austerity. Oh, see, our GDP is in a solid enough position. I'm not really that worried about the deficit. You know, honestly, honestly, I'm fine. There's really no point in cutting it anymore. Regular infantry. War has changed. As early as the West Russian War, it was apparent that the Heer's doctrines were woefully outdated. We had grown complacent sitting on our laurels while the Bolsheviks learned from their experience. Not for Spidel's genius, he might have soundly outmoved us and defeated us. But rather than a near disaster, we must be willing to learn, even from our enemies. The Russian concept of deep battle has some very interesting aspects, and even OKW is dismissive of its innately Russian character. The Americans have also made great strides in recent years, and gave our men a hard time in South Africa. We should assess our performance in that war and see where, what there is to learn from it. Enough that I 
I need to finish it. Okay, more practical options. An unfortunate consequence of Hitler's rule is that his military preference informed a great deal of our military R&D. In the late for his mind, bigger was always better. Look no further than the embarrassingly oversized mouse for an example. Much like Deutsche physics, the here's old R&D guidelines became solely belong solely in the dustbin of history. We've nothing to gain from constantly upscaling our equipment besides mildly amusing photographers that will someday s we'll see in the history book and laugh at it someday. Anyone who still advocates for such developments will be shown the door and their jobs offered to someone who, with their head screwed on properly. Well, there we go. Choice and focus. Oh. We can focus on one thing. Ooh, what are we working on? Let's do infantry weapons. That'll be good. And then the yes, soldiers. Not can not machines. The duty of a German soldier is to protect his nation, his honor, and his people. To the Nazis, that means setting aside his humanity and silencing his conscience. And the ethos preached ceaselessly by Schoener and his bloody-minded followers. The human heart is obsolete. They know only cold, mechanical aid. But soldiers remain humans like any other. They must establish a synthesis between restraints and freedom, between voluntary subordination and cons conscientious leadership, between pride in oneself and consideration for others, between rigor and compassion. Once a soldier is kept between these qualities, the soldierly spirit is in danger of degenerating into soulless routine and narrow-minded dogmatism. Beautiful. And now we're kind of getting a bit of cessation and the seizing of assets being effective. At least in Poland. The White Ruthenia is coming along quite nicely. Same with Northern Germany. We might be able to uh, disable Daimler Benz soon enough. Let's do a truly national army. Hitler would be terrified if he could see what we have wrought. The here wrestled away from the clammy grasp of his dying political institution. We have shrugged off the chains of ideology and can finally stand proud as servants of not of a, a dictator, but of an entire Reich. Henceforth, we shall once again be the protectors of Germany, sword and shield to be wielded in the nation, to by the nation, rather than by its leader. In the Great War, we were led to ruin by the mistakes of our leaders. In the Second World War, our defeat was only delayed. To prevent this total uh, destruction, we must never again allow ourselves to be controlled by a single man. Wunderbar. Zykov's going for a moral economy. Yeltsin's going for an alcoholic economy. What's Siberia up to? They're really just trying to catch up the best they can. A truly national army. Wunderbar. Approved Corvette holes. So we can go to either the Wehrmacht, or not the Wehrmacht, the Luftwaffe, or the Kriegsmarine. I don't know. What do we want to do? We could do science, too. Maybe we could also finish up the diplo the American diplomacy stuff. That might be good. Now let's look seawards. The Kriegsmarina, the most neglected branch of the Wehrmacht by far, they have changed little since the Second World War. Their doctrine is still heavily focused on submarines, backed up with a decent sized surface fleet. It was never enough to carry us against the British, but we would never have stood a chance against the U.S. Navy. Right now, the Kriegsmarine is heavily impressive only in appearances. It is severely 
outclassed by our rivals and needs heavy investment to be useful again. How much, though? We could assume a global role, as the cabinet recommends, or we could assume a defensive stance and protect what we have left in Europe. Um, I don't know. Looks like it's probably a good idea to go with the sweeping reforms. Generally speaking, I think the sweeping reforms would be better. I don't know if that's a, that's a controversial opinion at all, but... You know, go big or go home, you know? I, I said that to a girl once and she just went home. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's not the best thing to say, but I don't know! We'll have to figure out that uh, th figure that out next time, cause I gotta, I gotta cut it here, folks. Thank you as always for watching though. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more of this content, if you go ahead and hit the subscribe button for more uploads every weekday. So was every Saturday. If you have any comments, feedback, concerns, anything of a sort, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. I read all the comments I get and I appreciate any all feedback you kind of folks might have for me. If you want to send a few bucks my way, I have a Patreon down down link below. You can check that out want to chat or play games or have a fun old time in general, I have a Discord. And if you just are, um, I don't know, you want to watch me do some of this sort of stuff live, I have a Twitch down link below, which you can also subscribe to now, because I am officially an affiliate. So if you have a Twitch Prime, you can go ahead and uh, subscribe to me there. Um, if you have, a, have Amazon Prime, you can just go ahead and uh, leave me a subscribe, give me a bit of money, and you get a free subscription. But yeah, other than that, um, that's all I have, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you as always for watching. My name has been Dogboat333, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.